Hey, 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 what's up, beautiful people? My name is Prox, and today we have a very nice topic. We are going to talk about creating materials, specifically realistic materials, or some in some cases, like the last one here, uh, we're going to be creating a useful material. I'm going to show you how to make four materials with the arc and design uh, uh, material. And uh, we're going to start off with the, the left side. We're going to make a sort of... Uh, uh, ceramic uh, vase, like a type of thing, the type of thing that plates are made of, and you know, porcelain stuff. And we're gonna make a brushed uh, sort of aluminum or uh, steel material, per, per, maybe a brush chrome material, and a plastic, green plastic, for uh, you know, all kinds of appliances around the house, and then finally a clay material. I won't be covering the glass material today because uh, I'll be doing that in the uh, caustics uh, tutorial. I'll be doing a tutorial on caustics. And uh, the glass materials that come with Max are pretty good. So, let's get into it. Uh, first of all, we're going to open the material editor and uh, delete all the materials that I've just made. And we're going to scroll up here create a arch in design material and I'm going to assign this to uh, the first uh, one actually just assign it to all for now like so so let's zoom in on it this little bit now I'm going to be talking about the functions here as we go I won't be covering them all because there are a lot and I don't have all that much time you know it's getting late and I want to catch some sleep so first off we wanted to create the uh, yeah the porcelain the ceramics and uh, you can go in here you know Autodesk have been so nice to leave you with a bunch of uh, templates that you can choose from now there is a ceramic is a glazed ceramic right here but I I don't think it looks just the way that I want it so <coughs> I'm going to make one myself. So I'm just going to start off with a, uh, say, a glossy finish. You yeah, know, that looks nice. And I want it to be almost white. So I'm going to make it almost white. I'm going to turn the reflectivity to basically white as well. Because we want it to be per pretty reflective. Now, um, The diffuse uh, level right here controls how much of this color is shown up and how much energy uh, the material preserves. Meaning, if light is shined at it, how much of the light is stored in the material? Basically, uh, yeah, sort of. If it stores little, mat a little light, it reflects most of the light, and so the material will be darker. Basically, so this one will make it darker. If you can see here, me turning it down, the material turns darker. So we're going to leave it at 1 for now. It's the highest. And roughness sort of scruffs up the surface, made, making it sort of powdery, as if uh, as if the porcelain was brushed. And uh, we're going to make uh, blank porcelain today, pretty clean. So uh, I'm going to set this to a point 0.1. So we get a little bit of that scruffiness. You know, nothing's perfect. That's that's the key here. Nothing in real life is perfect. So you want to scruff it up. Scruff it up a little bit. And materials here very easily get perfect. Now... Uh, the reflectivity here, uh, it's a little too much, I think. It's a little too much. I'm going to set it to 0.5. So what this does is it controls how many percent of the incoming light, uh, direct light, it's going to reflect as a reflection, basically. So 100% means that it reflects everything, and it will be turning into a chrome material if you have the index uh, of refraction set correctly. We're going to be talking about that later when we get to the metal material. Uh, and the glossiness, uh, well, 0.9 is a little too much. Uh, you know, porcelain is pretty glossy, especially if you get some perfectly glazed one. So I'm going to set it to 0.8 for now, and we might change it. We might change it if uh, I feel like it's not uh, glossy enough. So we have a diffuse level of 1, a roughness of 0.1, reflectivity of uh, 0.5, and a glossiness of 0.8 with 8 glossy samples. Now, we're not going to be covering these just yet. We'll get to, we'll get to those later. Transparency, 
porcelain, as far as I know it, is not see-through. You know, it's not transparent. It's completely opaque, so we're not going to be touching any of those. Anisotropy, uh, it does not... That sort of controls if uh, reflections are being bent and warped because of the material and the line. That only happens in metals, so we're not going to be playing around with that now. And the index of refraction, we always choose for null, and we choose the correct in index of refraction, which is uh, it's around glass, basically. And as you can see, it's it's basically around glass. Crown glass is uh, 1.52, so 1.4 should be nice for us. Now, of course, we have to make a test render, so I'm going to hit the render button. Okay, as we can see, it turned out very white, which is uh, to be expected. So I want a little bit more reflectivity. And uh, what we can do then, basically, we can turn up this. Not the reflectivity, we just turn up the uh, the index of refraction to get sort of uh, more, 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 more what we like. And if you want to, you can turn up the reflectivity after that, if that doesn't fix it, basically. So here, as you can see, we're getting a little bit more reflectiveness. Not quite there yet. We're not quite there yet. I'm not quite happy with it. So I'm going to turn the reflectivity up to 0.8, basically. See, now that's looking nicer. That's 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 looking more like what I wanted. It looks like porcelain, looking pretty good. but. It's perfect, and we want to create some of that imperfection. And a nice way to do that is to go down here with the special purpose maps, click on the uh, where it says none, choose a noise filter or a noise map. As you can see, the surface already gets pretty bumpy, but it's not that imperfect. You know, we 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 purchased some pretty good china. You know, <laughs> so they uh, <coughs> they've made. Uh, you know they've, they've they've done some good work to smooth out the surfaces Maybe, although they didn't didn't get rid of everything they uh, they got rid of most of it so I'm gonna turn up the tiling here because I know uh, just by doing this so many times that uh, well I can I can show you I can show you what uh, 111 turns out to so see so w if we render now you're not gonna see any change because uh, yeah, basically, I should explain this, shouldn't I? Yeah. What this does, I click the noise map that I selected here. And what the tiling does, it tells uh, 3ds Max how many times it's going to fit this image, this square, inside the UV map. And if you know what a UV map is, it's a square texture uh, map, basically a an image that tells 3ds Max where to put pixels that are in here. So uh, one by one means that this entire thing fills out the entire map and that's why you don't see any change. So by making it smaller, making the number larger, basically forcing more of these maps into one square, basically 10 of them, making uh, the texture smaller, that should uh, apply some effect onto our uh, teapots here. So as you can see, now we're getting the effect that you, that you want. You can see in the reflection here, it's sort of wavy. That's what we want. It, it's it's a little imperfect, and not completely. It's not completely destroyed. If you want it to be more perfect, you just uh, um, you just turn this slider down even more. So say perhaps uh, 0 0.7. No, 0 0.07 is more fitting for you than 0 0.10 or 0 0.1, which is the same. Thing. So that's our that's our porcelain. That's basically uh, what you need porcelain. And of course, tweaking it is always good. Now you can add an ambient occlusion to it, but I don't think that's required right now, especially not with the nice lighting that I've set up right here. So now I'm going to make a metal material. Now, as with the porcelain, there's always a template that's been assigned for you. Um, for example, uh, for what we, we will be making, there's the brush metal. Now the brush metal is it's really nice. 
although it's not you know it's it's probably the best of the templates the most realistic of the templates that they've made you know of course they, they try to make it as realistic as possible but they can't just give out the answers for everything you know what i mean they want to challenge you a little bit so <clears throat> let's just delete this we can save this for now this is just a noise map like uh, we have here only they've stretched the tiling by 100 each way so nothing special about that it's nothing hard to we can we, we can create that later if we want to so we're gonna make a uh, arch and design material here and we're not gonna follow the template we're gonna create it ourselves so the diffuse level yeah that's nice that's okay we're not gonna be changing anything about that we want our metal to be a little bit lighter and it's a little dark metal out right there and the reflectivity of metal is a hundred percent basically a hundred percent although I want to make uh, make it a little bit glossy because it's not perfect it's not a perfectly chrome metal and uh, under the refraction uh, we're gonna set the index of refraction to uh, uh, a 50 basically 50 is a good uh, index of refraction because the way metal works is that it reflects a lot and center. Let me let me show you right here. Uh, this is basically uh, a, a graph that shows you the angle versus reflectivity. So at a straight angle, basically if you're looking right at the object, the reflectivity is low for, uh, well, this is uh, just a custom reflection function, so don't worry about that. And if you look at something from the side, it gets a lot more reflective. You can try this out yourself. For example, if you have an iPhone, well, that's pretty reflective in on itself. But if you look straight at it, it's a little dark. You can't really see too much because they've tried to make it as a uh, little reflective as possible. But if you turn it on the side and face a light down it, you can see that the that it turns into into almost a mirror reflection, basically making it. Uh, completely reflective so that's that's the theory on that if you t if you look at it if you look at an object from an angle it looks very reflective because the reflectivity is high as you can see here but if you look straight at it the reflectivity is low but metal is different metal if you look straight at it it's v very reflective and on the edge it, it sort of tapers off this is very hard to notice but if you study it uh, for a long time if you start to no notice these things as, as when I started doing 3d I started to notice these things and it's just makes it just makes sense over time once you've looked at this stuff uh, for a long time. So let's apply this metal material to our sort of can here, and let's do, ju just do a test render so you can see how reflective this turns out. Ah, I should probably have region this. Uh, so here's a region. All right, sweet. You can see it's very chrome. Uh, it reflects uh, almost everything perfectly, except I added some uh, glossiness, so it's not. You can see there's a little bit blur in the lights here and such. Now that's great, but brushed metal. Uh, if you look closely, if you have sort of a, uh, I don't know, if you have anything that's brushed metal, it warps. It kind of warps the uh, reflections, somewhat. And if you look at the anisotropy here, we can turn it down. Oh, not that much. Let's bring this up. As you can see, uh, as I bring this down, these, these, uh, the reflection here gets warped. It gets stretched and warped. And I like to add a little bit of rotation to it. If it'll update. It's a little slow right now. Oh, there we go. Come on, mate. Come on, scabby. Annoying. It's uh, my computer is bugging out when I'm uh, recording, so. <laughs> All right.
All right, great. That's that's what I'm looking for. So now we can check out the render again. Great, perfect. As you can see, the reflections are warped and twisted. Now you get a little bit of graininess here, and that's because our soft, our glossy samples are too low. So we can turn these up to uh, say 32. Now be aware that there is a way to fix that. Uh, if if it takes too long to render, you can turn on fast interpolate. However, as you can see here, it affects the accuracy of the reflections. But that's all. It turns. Uh, the reflections to sort of a blurry nice but if you're already having a blurry reflections that's a nice thing to have if you have a slow computer it's a nice function the fast interpolate now here is the uh, sort of noise that was uh, from the other material we can add this noise into the uh, glossy reflection map right here and what this does is that it controls the uh, material material to to tell the renderer where it's supposed to be glossy and where it's supposed to be twitched at an angle. And when we have our uh, our warping function in, this works perfectly uh, well with it. So it'll warp the reflection and it'll send the reflection in, in a sort of a, a sprinkled way as the way you've seen it with uh, uh, brushed metals. You probably, everybody's seen brushed metals probably. If not, you can just go to any uh, sort of appliances store and they make brush metal everything. <laughs> so as you can see, as we turn up the glossy samples, th the renderer takes a longer time, but we get a smoother result. And now you can see we've really turned this into a nice uh, brushed uh, aluminum or, or, or chrome uh, material. Great. So next up is going to be this part. Let's just select it right here. And uh, we can move this uh, over. And this time uh, we're going to make a plastic. And uh, you can make, you can uh, again, as always, click this plastic here or the glossy plastic. However, I, I don't agree with this at all, uh, basically. You know, some of these settings are nice, but I don't think they function uh, the way they should. So I'm going to, uh, again, just uh, delete that, start from scratch again, so I can show you how the pros do it now, <laughs> how you do it if you really, really want to learn how to use the Arch Design material, because it's really powerful. A lot of people just use it for the templates, and that's, in my opinion, it's not wrong, of course, but it's wrong in my mind, you know. You want to learn how to make materials without using the templates. So, as we're going through this, the roughness again, it sort of scruffs off the surface. Now, if you've seen some sort of matte plastic, like a, like a, um, I wouldn't say a vase, but I can't think of, uh, I can't think of, you know, kitchen appliances and stuff like that. You know, so something that you water your plants with, you know. Perhaps that, perhaps that. Let's see. It has sort of a scruffy surface, so not make it two, make it a point two, so to get a little bit of that scruffiness. And they're pretty reflective. They're pretty reflective, but they're glossy. They're glossy. So we're going to turn the glossiness down to, I'd say, point four for now. We might change all of this later. You know that rendering is a, is a uh, sort of process that you have to, that you have to go through creating materials you gotta create a little bit and then you gotta see a little bit do I like it do I not like it and then change it so we're gonna pick a green color here and I'm going to uh, yeah no never mind yep yeah, pick a green color and I'm gonna turn these up a little bit because I know already that it's gonna be uh, that it's gonna be a little bit glossy and a little bit prickled so 16 samples right there and we're gonna have to turn the index of refraction up a little because plastic is uh, uh, it doesn't act like metal. It's it's, a, it's about yeah. That's a nice that's a nice number. You can just try it out and you'll get something like this. So let's apply the material and take our first render.
Nice. Now, actually, right off the bat, I'm really happy with this result, but it's not. I'm not quite perfect. It's a little too bright for me. It stores too much energy. Basically, if this was some kind of uh, uh, scattering material, or you know, you can sometimes see your hand to thin plastic. You know, if you take your hand on the back and shine a light through it, you can see your shadow on the front side, and that would be going through this for sort of this subsurface scattering materials which will take too long to go through today so we're going to fake that a little bit by turning down the diffuse level to uh, yeah 0.8 and that should darken up our our uh, our model a little bit and uh, I want a little I want a little bit more reflection and uh, want it to be a little bit more glossy all right Something like that. All right, great. So it's slightly darker. It's a little bit more blurry. I think it's great. You can oh, you can add uh, bumps to this one as well as you did with that to get it even more sort of imperfect. Uh, even scratch it up, you know, with the... Uh, with the brushed one, if it's a uh, old sort of uh, used plastic, but this one is a new one, just out of the factory, because <laughs> I don't have time to do all that stuff. You know, time is really what makes this good. If you want stuff to look good, uh, take your time with it. This is just I'm just doing this really fast. Usually, materials is what it's what make makes up your scene. If you have great models and you have great lighting, sometimes if you have crappy materials, it you look like a noob. You know, <laughs> even though you're a great modeler. If you add materials that are not suited or it doesn't look realistic and you're trying to go for a realistic look and that stylized look, then you're going to end up looking like a noob. And you're, however you're great your models are, you know, they're, they're going to go down the drain. So now I'm going to talk about a material that I use a lot. And basically because I'm primarily a modeler, I don't primarily do uh, rendering and sort of uh, texture work though. But... I use this technique. I use this technique a lot. If I don't have time for a global illumination setup, I just want to do a quick render. Or even if I do a global illumination setup, like I showed in the uh, uh, what's the mental ray clay render tutorial video. If you knew, any of you watched that, I'm gonna do a sort of uh, a clay material. So first off, I want to set a color for my clay material. I usually start off with a white, and then I add some yellow, and then I add some green, and then I add some red to get sort of a sort of beige beige is color yep that looks great now I don't want it to be too reflective because uh, it kind of disturbs uh, the shape of the model however I want it to be reflective but I don't want it to reflect the environment so I'm gonna click on this one it says a highlight plus a uh, final gather only it basically stops it from reflecting any other uh, parts it just reflects the lights and that's what we want now I want it to be reflective but not too reflective 0.5 and definitely not glossy so uh, perhaps a uh, point uh, point 0.6 you know oh, that's too still too glossy 0.5 try 0.5 and then we'll see how we end up and uh, now uh, this is not the ambient occlusion this is not the big part of that this is just to get the uh, Put the roughness to one here because clay is very you know it's it's gushy <laughs> um this is not the important part what the important part is is down here uh, actually you just click here where it says uh, to the color actually just i just made a mistake that i copy the color oh crap i just pasted it instead oh well i'll make the color again <laughs> Click the button next to color because I just uh, thought of what I did wrong. There. Select the ambient reflective occlusion material. Let me. I did that a little quick. Let's do it again. Click the color button. Go down to uh, mental ray maps and choose the ambient reflective occlusion. It's the top of the line. So choose that and double click it to open it up. Turn the samples up because 16 samples will leave a, a grainy result. And then uh, give it, this. This is where you give your color. Give your color to it. So uh, pick your color. I'm just gonna make a color here by blending some uh, base colors to get that uh, beige color that we had before. 
Now, uh, this is uh, w these controls are a little bit complicated to explain. However, they are sort of self-explanatory at the same time. The spread uh, is basically what this uh, what this does is that it shades your objects. If you hold your hands together, like really close, you can see it getting darker and darker in there. And that's not because of the shadow. That is because <clears throat> less and less photons make it in between the gaps of your hands, leaving a sort of uh, undecided shadow. It's an indirect shadow, if you may. That's really hard to catch with uh, with uh, uh, global illumination and final gather. So people sort of add this on and after. So we're gonna leave the dark to black because we want it to be black shadows. We don't want it like funky. You can use this for anything if you want to, but we're gonna use it as black right now. Now you can render this out as a map and uh, use it as a base for your texture. Say you're making a character or anything like that. That's really great. I can show you how to do that in a later tutorial. But now the spread, what the spread does is basically, this is 75% of what is to be shaded will be shaded with full darkness, if you understand what I'm saying. So if you set it to one, it'll shade with full darkness all the way and, it'll, and the fall off uh, will decide how much the, uh, the gradient will be. So I'm gonna set it to 0.9 for now to get sort of a dark effect that you'll see. It won't be too dark because I have a lot of lights and it's the one to the right that's closest to the light. Now the max distance, this depending completely on what you're trying to do, uh, the max distance tells it how far should the uh, material look if there's anything that it might get a shadow from. So say you hold your hands 10 centimeters apart and you had uh, this material on your hands but you set the mass max distance to 5 centimeters then it wouldn't shade anything. However, if you set your... Uh, your max distance to 15 centimeters then it would shade a little bit how, although then although 10 centimeters apart it's uh, it's quite a lot so it's it won't shade that much the closer something is the more it'll shade you understand great so this is just depending on how it's large your scene is that's how you have to set it for and sometimes you might want might want to have different shading for different uh, objects hope that explained it <laughs> Okay, so I'm gonna I'm, I've measured my scene. It's about the pots are about uh, 1,300 millimeters uh, in size. So I'm gonna set this to a uh, thousand, yeah, thousand millimeters. And this is completely irrelevant of what you might you might use. And this is a totally unrealistic scene. And these pots are huge. And don't even use that. <laughs> don't even use this particular number. You know, you might have a completely different pot, but but. Uh, one thing I also should mention that if you have it set to zero, that's infinite, basically. The material will look forever for something to reflect off of. And that can be, if you have a large scene, very, very detrimental to your render times. However, I don't have a large scene, so I can set it to zero if I want to. But I'm not. I'm going to set it to a thousand. And reflective, uh, this will basically mean that it'll, if it... Uh, if it catches color from another material like this green pot here, it will reflect it back as a uh, as a cause of you selecting reflective. It will reflect it back in the shaded color, basically. And a returning reclusion to alpha. This basically means that it will write on the alpha channels, and depending on if you have a, a transparent object and so on and so forth. And uh, these I have never messed with. Uh, the fall off chooses how quick the uh, shading should fall off. Basically, that's 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 self-explanatory. Basically, the lower it is, the, uh, the the shorter the fall off. The higher it is, the higher the fall off. And these two, I don't know. I don't know what they do. Basically. So now that we've created this and gone through all the mumbling and jumbling, and you're probably tired of listening to me already, we're going to make sure that the material is applied, like so. Show the material. Yeah. And um, F10 region, no, select a region and move the region and render. All 
Okay, sweet. That 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 looks great. As you can see, around these little things here, you get this sort of dark little shading. Uh, if you uh, well, you can't see it on that part. But if we've made one without this, you wouldn't get this round shading. I should probably show you. Uh, let's make a clone of this. Like so. Oh. Yeah, great. Now let's take this away. And uh, yeah, bring up the color that I had. I always forget to copy the colors. Should uh, remember that all more often. Yeah, that's about the color we have. So if we render it now, render. Yeah, even though I didn't match the color perfectly, and uh, but you'll see if you can see here, for example, on the underside of this, this is a lot bright. I should match the color. Definitely should match the color because it doesn't explain it that well if I don't match the color. So the color color is a little darker. Oh. Yeah. Okay. That that's if I don't match it now, then what the hell? Then you're gonna have to use your bra <laughs> brains to understand this part. Ah, but I didn't match it, and that's probably because of the occlusion as well. Okay, as you can see here, uh, around the edge down here, it's not as dark as up here, and that's not because of the color. Basically, if you look at the light here area, that's probably the same color. That is because it doesn't occlude the area. Basically, it shoots out sort of. It doesn't shoot out rays. It it just looks out like a camera and looks at. Is there something there? Yes, there is. Dark in this area. But once, but up here it shoots it out towards nothingness, as you can see here is nothing, so it won't occlude the area. That's why it's darker and shaded up here and more shaded down here and around these uh, corners. And that's what makes this material perfect for showing off your materials that have detail, you know, intricate small details. It'll shade those right up where the global illumination can't get and stuff like that. It looks a little bit more unrealistic. In some cases, it makes it look a lot more realistic. For example, in an interior scene where there's hard to get those sharp sort of dark details in the corners where you want them because the scene is so large, you can't really get that shading that you want instead of turning the uh, photon value up to a crazy amount of billions and millions of photons shooting everywhere and making your day hell because you have to wait 15 hours for a render. So yeah, let's make a final render and uh, look at our results and talk it over. So first we had the uh, the ceramic the ceramic pot, the uh, porcelain basically for your chinas and whatever you want to make of it. Now add a texture to it. You don't have to leave it white. That's amazing if you add some texture to it, dragons or flowers or whatever you feel like. And uh, with high reflectivity, still glossy, and added a bump map to get that imperfection. Now with the uh, with metal material here, the brushed metal, uh, it's highly reflective, not perfectly reflective, I made it a little bit below perfectly reflected, and uh, added some, uh, some uh, anisotropy to it to warp those uh, reflections, and I added a noise map, a stretched noise map to get that uh, brushed feel. Now I used the noise map that came with the template however it's really easy to create that noise map. It's just a noise map that you uh, set the size to very small and then you change the tiling so that it tiles more to the left and right instead of up and down basically making the material a striped material. Highly reflective. Remember what makes it so reflective here is not the reflective uh, slider Let's bring that up again. It's not this, even though this is set to max, it's not this that sets the reflectivity that makes it that reflective. It's it's down here in the index of refraction. And the index of, of refraction tells, tells the renderer, it basically makes this curve right here, tells the renderer that if you're looking right at it, it's gonna be super reflective like a mirror, okay? And if you wanted to make a mirror, well, 
then you basically you don't use this at all you turn it to custom relativity function and then you just slide everything to max so it goes right to the top and it will reflect everything in fact uh, the uh, that's just um, if you're gonna make a mirror you basically you're better off just using uh, a material here here that uh, that uh, other esque already created no tint it's just a basic mirror it'll just reflect everything it's perfect now the green material was a plastic it's soft glossy reflections and it doesn't retain all of the light so I turned the uh, the diffuse value a little bit down and I made it green and uh, a little bit scruffy on the surface so we get that powdery feel last one was the clay I explained that just now in the end here and basically the ambient reflection of occlusion uh, however this is uh, however this image is without it because we rendered again just to show you and uh, yeah I've talked about this a lot before so that one is really useful for showing off your models and stuff like that so oh, this video was probably really long and I didn't keep the time but I hope you enjoyed it I hope you enjoyed it a lot I certainly did. I love 3D, and uh, I hope you uh, stick around for uh, the next tutorial that I'll be making. Uh, I'm not sure what it's gonna be about yet. I think I might be going into caustics, and if you don't know what caustics is, then you're in for a uh, sweet surprise. So uh, please subscribe, leave a comment, tell me if you liked it, tell me if you want to see anything different. I always like to get some critic criticism. You know, people just say, "Oh, it's great." You know, tell me, you know, maybe you like the images and how I do stuff, but tell me if the way I teach you is good enough. You know, it's, it's I'm not a teacher. I don't have any, you know, education in teaching people. I just, uh, I just like, I just enjoy teaching people, uh, especially this stuff, especially stuff that I know and an enthusiast about. I hate teaching people stuff that I don't really care about. You know, who likes that? So leave me a comment below telling me if you want to see some improvements maybe you want to see more references maybe you want a uh, fancy intro people always tell me to make a fancy intro no my friends tell me make a fancy intro it'll, it'll, it'll look so much better if you make a fancy intro we know you can do it and I'm like yeah but it'll take a lot more time to edit